Energy from the Oceans is a technology being developed by the Department of Energy and the Solar Energy Research Institute. It is clean, round-the-clock electric power from a renewable resource. It is a potential resource that can save precious fossil fuels and supply large amounts of electricity to our energy-hungry nation. Bob Douglas, manager of ocean systems for TRW, has been involved in the development of ocean energy technology since the early 70s. I understand that the uh, National Science Foundation brought industry into the study of ocean energy in, in the early 74, around in there. In uh, late 73 and in early 74, the, uh, the National Science Foundation recruited uh, industry, that is industrial teams, uh, to study the uh, technical feasibility of ocean thermal uh, energy conversion systems. These studies were started in the spring of 74 and were completed in 75 by uh, Lockheed and TRW and reported at the Offshore Technology Conference. Both companies and both industrial teams included, uh, concluded that uh, OTEC plants were not only uh, technically feasible, that is, uh, buildable from current technology, but that uh, were probably, uh, could be uh, economic within a relatively short development span. Plants that actually feeding probably island communities at first, which had the most desperate need for a replacement for foreign oil, uh, notably Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and the state of Hawaii. The island strategy involves building commercial OTEC plants a few miles off major U.S. islands like Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, Hawaii, Guam, and Micronesia. The islands are forced to use more than 100,000 barrels of imported oil each day. For example, Puerto Rico spends as much as $1 million each day for oil to produce electricity. Because the necessary temperature difference is as close as five or six miles offshore from the islands, and plants can be as small as 100 million watts, the islands offer excellent early markets for the first OTEC plants. OTEC systems can be economically sited virtually anywhere plus or minus 10 degrees of latitude. That is, uh, at 10 degrees, anywhere from the equator, 10 degrees north or 10 degrees south. There are other locations which are attractive, particularly the Gulf of Mexico which uh, we believe could supply well over 50,000 megawatts of energy to the south coast of the United States. The uh, Western Pacific would be an ideal location for the so-called plant ships, that is the, the, uh, plant, the ships that might process ammonia or, or, or aluminum. Uh, the Delta T, that is temperature difference in the Western Pacific is quite a bit higher than it is in the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. This is a converted Navy barge, developed in a joint effort by the State of Hawaii, Lockheed Missiles and Space Company, and the Dillingham Corporation. It produces 50,000 watts of electricity, enough to power 12 average American homes, using no coal, no oil, just a vast ocean and the heat from the sun. Just 15 months from the time Lockheed decided to build the Mini-OTEC and started the job, the system was turned on. Miniotech is the first net-powered floating ocean thermal energy conversion plant. Miniotech produced 50 kilowatts of growth power. To operate its own working equipment, provide necessary power for lights and other necessities for the operating crew, and still produced 10 kilowatts of net electrical power. This was within a small percentage of the Lockheed engineer's projection and proved that ocean thermal energy conversion is a reliable and efficient method of producing electricity. The future pipe will probably be plastic. It would enable the manufacture of a large diameter pipe, in polyethylene for example, on the site of the power plant. The line is towed to within proximity of the OTEC vessel. is then connected to the cold water well in the middle of the ship. In case of storm, it can be rapidly disconnected. Right, 
But these successful trials are discontinued after four months. They were slated to last three years. The reason? The United States no longer extends priority to renewable energy. In the last 10 years, the oil industry has developed hurricane-proof offshore rigs ideally suited for generating electricity from surface and deep ocean water. The rapid evolution of these designs has resulted in simplified construction and lower costs. The latest cell spar as shown in this video involves the assembly of 20-foot diameter pipes extending approximately 500 feet down into the ocean. They can be constructed in U.S. or Puerto Rican shipyards and would qualify for 87.5% federal loan guarantees. They can be towed and installed anywhere in the world and have almost no environmental impact. They can be designed and located so as to minimize or eliminate any visual effect. Their land use is negligible, only requiring space for the cable to come out of the ocean. They are ideally suited to requirements of the 21st century. Producing two of these 100 megawatt floating OTEC rigs per year would create over 2,000 direct manufacturing jobs and tens of thousands of indirect jobs. Each rig will save one and a half million barrels of oil each year and will produce 800 million kilowatt hours of electricity, enough for over a hundred thousand people. By the fourth or fifth rig, construction costs are expected to, to lower to the level where they would be competitive with fossil fuel plants, but with much lower operating costs and no fuel costs. Oil prices are expected to remain over $30 a barrel far into the future. At these prices, OTEC rigs will cover their financial and operating costs and will generate substantial profits without government subsidies. Now, in 2006, the Department of Energy is focused on wind and biomass. OTEC has been entirely eliminated, although it would now be highly profitable.